Hallo, ik is Vaatje Kutri Schesket. De programma met BBC Albe had al gekregen skeelijk en worden ik aan een salesforce naar Halbe. Dus met jou naar Valentijn, ik is Hamid Tolletjera. Ik wil manager worden nog als Klanien Rangers, Amy Nichtol, Colorooms in Studio. Er programma naar Heike nog. Die bal kost een baan een dag later, weer zien ze er eerst op je PLG uit Chile en Oogvies. Kun je zien wel klikken naar Hearts, Claire Delworth, met bij haar vrije vlieg. Ik heb geef zien barig gemaakt met bal Wally Alba en kutschok Katie Barber. Haan dag is fijn gegeven geen goal is. Amy, welcome to 360. Thank you very much. Now, I'm sure that, well actually, there is loads to talk about in terms yeah. of Rangers <laughs> and the league and everything that's going on just now. But let's hear about you personally and your career in football and actually how you got started in the first place. Um, I started playing from a real young age. So I played with a boys team and at that time, um, not that, well, it doesn't feel that long ago, but it was a long time ago. You could only play with a boys team until 12. So it's changed quite considerably now, which is amazing for young girls. And then started playing for a girls football team, played for the national squad, played at a number of clubs in Scotland. And eventually, unfortunately, I snapped my ankle ligament. So I had to retire and uh, ended up going into coaching. Was the first female head of youth in the UK, I think, actually, at Glasgow City. And then went on to be head coach at Rangers and now oversee the programme there. Even though with your injury and that early retirement, do you still look back at your playing career with fond memories and kind of wish that you, you could have extended that time? I think definitely now because I was really fortunate that actually I was kind of in the year group where Jenny Beatty and Kim Little and all that had just came into the national squad. So to go on and see them have such prominent careers is amazing as well as all the other girls. But I don't have any regrets because I've ended up in a really fortunate position that I get to do football as my full-time job and I think it would be so much harder now to be able to come out of sport or come out of playing because there's so many females that are aspiring to have a career in football. And looking back just to when you were 12 and playing with the boys team, probably back then you would never have thought that fo women's football would be where it is now. No, and it's actually got, uh, at the time. I got picked up by a Rangers scout when I was playing for Clyde Boys Club and uh, he thought I was a boy with long hair. Oh no, because <laughs> he didn't have like a team at the time. So I think that to see the progression and see that young girls have that opportunity to be able to go and be a professional footballer in Scotland is amazing. Have you ever come across them since? N no, no. But I, w I remember being devastated because I was like to my mum, it's so sexist. You know, at the time I was just like, I couldn't understand, but Obviously now you've got a different viewpoint on it, um, but yeah, a long time ago that was now. But unfortunately, like you say about being so young and <clears throat> even experiencing sexism then, there is still so much work to do in terms of that with women's sport. Yeah, I think that it's difficult because I can see a different side of it now and I always try and be balanced in, in my view. I think that, you know, when you ask equality you can't pick and choose what parts of it you want which means that from a performance point of view you're going to be critiqued and I think if you're critiqued on your performance that's okay. I think when it comes down to whether you're male or female or anything like that then just leave it at the door you know it's fine to be able to say you don't you don't like women's football or you don't like women's sport in general because we're not trying to compare ourselves to men like, I often say it's not like you're trying to ask Andy Murray to play Serena Williams at tennis. It, it just wouldn't work because, you know, physically it's not the same, so. It seems to be <clears throat> something that a lot of people find it difficult to grasp, but you just put it so clearly. It, <laughs> it's different and it's fine just to accept it's different. Yeah, and I think that as long as you can be accepting of that and accept that people want to be able to go on and have a career, whether it be, let's be recognised, for doing a great job, you know, probably the most current one's Emma Hayes that's been linked with a lot of male coaching jobs. And football's football, it's about connecting with people, it's about tactics, it's about the overarching thing, but it doesn't mean because you're female you won't be competent. Likewise, it doesn't mean in female football that if it's a male coming in, there's amazing male coaches that have supported the women's game. Um, and it's just about connecting with people. Exactly, and if we just go back to that, that time when that scout did kind of look at you for rages, but aside from that, does it kind of feel full circle with where you are now with your job with Rangers and actually how much it's grown and how successful you are now? 
Yeah, definitely. I think that that's one of the main things that you know, I would say I'll certainly take away is that there's the opportunity for young girls to play, but not only play now, to be able to be a professional footballer within Scotland because so many players have left and they've left because they had no other choice um, to go and further and, uh, and make them the best that they can be. And now we've got an opportunity to, one, retain uh, the best players in the country, but also to be able to go and showcase the talent that was already here. Mm. And it is so good to see that growth, but we will have more chat on this shortly. Ranel Claire Delworth or Manage Cloikal or Son Hearts at in season so. Or Son Kitchigan had on the Achtaikli ticket season, Haniri in of Yar. Bring clearly three shasket, Gusbarak Ijgain, we gain a behe ek time castle. The Brut at a Hound Gadidu than Echtai Hart Claire Delworth at Time Castle. A high grass on the skipper Ila Agonate and a Hanakin Server Shaikh Dosha. I actually just started kicking a ball about in the playground at uh, my school ball green, and then my dad knew someone who ran Spartans Girls team. So I think I joined her under 11s, but I was only like seven, eight. So I had a good four years, three, four years there. And then I just went from under 11s to under 15s at Spartans, went through the academy there and then at like Spartans, you could see the player pathway, like from under 13s, we were going to Scotland, like their first team games in Bolga, really, and that. So it did give me a pathway to see like where I could go if I stuck at it. Gluish Claire Kuhart, like Urs Koiblin the Jirk, I guess when I hear it laugh by Giri the Comison, I get held in. So I played at 15s, like I was quite a young 15, like I was a year below, and then I'd moved up to development and that, at development, I changed my position from right wing to right back. And I just kind of, I had good coaches at development, Jordan Forrester and Robbie Horn, who's a body rig manager. And then Andy Enwood pulled me up for training and I just kept saying like, can I come back? Like, it was actually probably on my own back. I was probably pestering them. I was like, can I come back and train? Like, I just wanted to be in that environment and I wanted to improve. And he was like, yeah, 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 of course. And he put me in a squad against Glasgow City in a Scottish Cup tie, I think it was. And I thought, there's no chance I'm getting on here best team in Scotland. And he was like, Dele, you're going on left back. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but I actually, like, I did, like, it's still to date one of, like, my best performances because I'm not, like, left back isn't my strongest position, but I actually done really well there. And it was one of the moments where you come off the pitch and you're like, that was amazing, I want to do it again. And that mm. got me into the of it. I just wanted to keep going. So he had gone at three seasons, I think. A clear of that can give us skipping and banning up with fat and his arc of the skipper bar cause your heart of Midlothian. The Shafarka trainee, Nick Gathers, in his park at Time Castle, who look at in Clerkhoe, he did it as skipper. Yeah, it's really good, obviously, seeing the transition. So, like, when I started, I was training out in Trinent at 15s, and it would be like half eight till like 10. And it would be like, I was only 15, so I was depending on my mum and dad taking me. Whereas now you come here and we've also got good training times. We get quite a lot given to us, like we've got all the kit and that. And even like players like Jamie Walker, after a game on a Sunday, Jamie will message me like, how was the game? And all the players interact with you. Like even the coaching staff, like I was just having a chat with Paul Gallagher out there. Like it's just, it, it's amazing, like. But clear my far to skip a heart to glee Archie is asking an SW Pellahoon and the Dabbins in the Aegea. But she gave me a year that you it's be able to slow more at Time Castle. We got told, I think two weeks before, that we were going to play at Tyne Castle. So we knew, but we actually had to wait for it to be broken out in the news. But I've said before, like my team, like the team then started a whole year before we won the season. Like we had trained consistently for a year. So it, when the final whistle went, I was so grateful and so glad for all my teammates to have finally, because I've seen all the work they put in. Like we had like ambulance workers, we had policemen, like they would come straight from a 12 hour shift and come to training. Like, the work that they put in to get that, I was just so like, I felt so proud on behalf of them. And I think everyone else wanted to win it for each other. So it was a really nice feeling, yeah. So here it says in Slanach, it's a free of league. She caught him in the sea, he did be on to clear as no coke like it did. But to go to buy and do, I see her son Lesek of his earth as he can, Mark Lichter. It was also quite tough because we were playing 
like the league's a lot quicker, faster, stronger, which you would expect for a step up because the level's going to be more demanding. And also our first game was against Rangers, who were full time. So going from SPFL to having a six month break, going straight back into it was quite hard. But I think as a team we came back all like ready to learn and also we had a new coaching staff, which was exciting. We've all gelled quite well and I think that every time we're on the training pitch we are developing and getting better and learning off Kirky and Vuzi and Lisa and Paul, even learning off the physios, different techniques. We've got quite a young team as well, so it is a learning experience, but as I said, like we go out every game and we want to compete and we want to learn and we want to give our best account of each other and like work hard for each other, especially like players on the pitch, coaches, anyone that helps us, like that we all work for them. Oakheart three points in the trap of the game are clear to the Hibernian. As the Hawthorn have been a half sorry to get into the clear, and by Anka Matuli, Hersen to have won I actually couldn't train the whole week because I worked in a pharmacy and someone tested positive for COVID, so I was a close contact, but I was negative and I had to wait. And I came back the Friday night before uh, before the game, trained the Friday night, and I was like to Gio, like. Something feels weird, and she was like, "What?" And I was like, "Just like something's wrong." And she was like, "I don't know what you're on about." And I went home, and my granny had passed just suddenly. So that whole week for me had just been so disrupted. Like, and all the girls, I think, did have good sessions under the belt. So I let them know on a Saturday, and I let Kirky know, and he was really good for me. He was like, "Listen, come to the game, and if you don't want to play, you don't have to play." Like, he was like, "It's completely up to you." Like, we totally understand. Like, obviously, it's like a grieving process and everyone views differently and all the girls were so helpful like they came around and they were just supporting me the whole sun the Sunday and like just on the pitch it just felt special that day like I'm, I felt like in my heart something was going to happen and I didn't I didn't expect a win possibly I was just expecting like whether it was a draw or when something was happening I could feel a good feeling in my stomach and when the goal went in like everyone was together like I actually ran to the goalie but the whole team like that just spirit just lifted and the morale lifted and it definitely mean coming because we deserved like a good performance we've been putting in good performances we've been learning we just hadn't got that win or that draw under our belt so to get that and obviously against Hibs was a good moment. Ha clear I toshe ke dri apal koshe agus men ha hai fiach indi brutgen horse dash is he a coach of the Yorkers and Archer. I the toy clan ke vil a nurche clan yen a talk in a county kit. I was like crutching, Galen fast ball cushion and ban on the Nalopa. I said I was doing the Edinburgh South coaching camp, and there's like 25 girls, whereas two years ago there was only 15. So even though it doesn't sound like a big gap, 10, 10 more girls in this team, and then you've got to, they've now got an under nines, under 11s, under 13s, under 15s team. And then you look at the development of our academy, who's which is really good. Like I can go with the girls sometimes train before us on Tuesday. And we watch them and they're like we're like, whoa, like at points like they're miles ahead of what I was at that age. But obviously it's exciting because you just look at even across the world, like Alex Scott's just got the football football focus goal. Like when I was young there wasn't many women football commentators and that. It just little things like that that might not seem a lot to someone that isn't interested in women's football. But to a wee girl who's watching it, it might give her the confidence to go and try and say, do you know what, I want to play football. And it's also a great thing, like, from when I started football to now, it's like a million miles away. Amy, even just listen to Claire at the end there, it just goes to show how important role models are in sport and in women's sport. Yeah, I think that even, like, you know, when I was younger and actually re more recently, I, I, I went to look for games of Pauline Hamill, of Julie Fleeton, um, and they're not there. It, it's so, like, it's such a simple thing, but you just, because of the world now, like, if you were to Google something like that, you would think we'll be able to find it. And particularly for Julie, who is one of the most prolific goal scorers of a national team in Scotland, our goals are just aren't there and that's so sad because uh, actually you guys have probably got the majority of the footage because you picked up the game so early but it's so sad for young girls that they can't look back on no models like that and be able to go wow like you know it was there and it's you know only recently that it's began to gain 
momentum and they can look back on it now. It's scary when you put it like that because, I mean, Julie and Pauline were playing not that long ago. No, it wasn't that long ago. I mean, I mean, I stopped playing in 2010 and, uh, um, yeah, I just thought, like, in my mind at that point, I was, we were doing a bit of work and I actually presented to our own girls' academy on my own career and I went back and I was like, I'll be able to look for footage and, and it was Anne Helene and Anna. I mean, Anne Helene literally stayed up all night burning discs um, so that we would be able to have copies of the game, but I actually think that's the only copies that there is because at that point nothing was online or it's not stored or saved anywhere it, it, it's just not there and it's such a shame because they like everybody's played their part in being a pioneer for women's football to this point so hopefully someday someday with a little bit of time we'll be able to pull it all together again go through all the archives <laughs> it'll be a, a very worthwhile job though because it is just so important and it's great to see how much it's grown. It's also great to hear Claire kind of live out her childhood dream. You must see that too across yeah. across it. It's so like I think that you just grow up and football is such a prominent thing in Scotland. It doesn't matter whether you're you know in Inverness and whether it be Ross County or Inverness, Caledonia, and Thistle, all the way down the country. So for a young boy and a young girl, they want to be able to go and play and represent something that they place so much value on when they're growing up and their family does as well. And the other kind of reality with women's football, not so much at the top of SWPL1 where there are professional teams, but kind of throughout the league, there are girls and women who are working full time, very intense, and then they're also training and playing at the weekend. And th that takes real dedication too. Yeah, and you can never I think the, the thing that's probably most at risk now for women's football is that we forget that almost, that if it goes full circle and hopefully eventually everyone within the SWPL could be full time or part time and, and, and do it as a career, but we can never forget where we've came from because it gives you such an appreciation for everything that you have now. Mm -hmm. So to go from that transition and having to go like Nicola Dockery is a great example for us, was working with uh, people that had dementia, then coming back, driving from Edinburgh to go to training, and now she's a full-time athlete. I think it's really important we still continue to talk about that because for the next generation come through, that's what's going to keep us grounded and respectful and humble. And that's something that we've noticed at the training centre in terms of the football department, that the girls, because they've not had that consistently as they come through, they're so much more appreciative of everything that they get. I was going to say, it'll probably give young girls coming through a lot of inspiration to see that you can actually play full time and achieve those goals that you would have growing up. I mean, even f for example, on Sunday at the Motherwell Rangers game, speaking to Motherwell Stuart Hall afterwards, he had two players who were just off a night shift. So off a mm -hmm. night shift, slept for a couple of hours and then played that game against Rangers, back for another couple of hours sleep and then back on to night, sh night shift. I mean, how different is our Rangers match day for you now? What's involved in that build up? Pretty much they're just like full-time athletes. So they come in, they train. Just now it's a bit different because of COVID, obviously. Um, previously we would have done double sessions, but they come in, they train a Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday morning. Um, they go away with their lunch. They have some Zooms in the afternoon. We train on a Saturday for a match prep and then they have a Zoom on a, a Sunday morning and that, that's pretty much it. I think we encourage the girls to do stuff out with that though because some females and I think males as well aren't good at being full-time footballers. It can be a really kind of lonely life and you need to always think of what's beyond that. So some of the girls are doing open university degrees, some of them are maybe like doing some coaching and just different things and we encourage that. Um, but yeah, it's completely different. But we also, and I will always have an appreciation of going night shift, going to play a game. We've obviously got Claire Gemmell that's still working just now, who, who's an amazing and stalwart because whether you're at Motherwell and you're a, you know, a Jill Inglis or anything like that, they've all helped get the game to where we are now. And we can't, for, we'll never be able to thank or pay the people back for, for the work and the commitment they've put on. You must feel really proud kind of seeing how far it's come now. Yeah, it is. but we've still got such a long way to go and I think that that 
that was one of the the hard lessons that I learned at City at the Youth Academy because we done really well one year and I thought this is at this you know the 13s the 15s the 17s all were kind of in contention for the league and cup finals and you just need to go again you just kind of get there and then you're like right okay next day what do we do now right well we need to go again and that's what we need to continue to do and we need to continue to drive and we're desperate for you know, Hearts and Hibs and all the other clubs to invest in their women's game because it will overall it will drive Scottish football to be at the forefront. And that is great to see and hopefully even next season we'll be back here on the sofa and speaking again about even how much it's just grown in the last year almost. Yeah, because yeah, I think I, I said that to you previously, like three years ago I would have never have thought the game in Scotland would be where it is just now. And it's limitless. I think that that's the unique thing about women's sport just now, that it can just grow and grow and grow. And of course, we'll get to a point where it'll plateau, but I don't see it being any time soon. A good place to be just now, though. <laughs> yes. I click at their ball, volley in a halibut, Katie Barber, and Erevi and Chess, the VN is three, and I covered Nigeria and the Hopper Lyle, and a Serevish Nashington, a Slanche. Hi, Hainis, co click at their Rachel Vorestan, and in the final rush, and you can see at the Gamis or Gamkin, who lahish Davil to speak it again. Katie Barber is a bioglock of the ball volleyball air shock. I was glass of who you knew the Gavi Pars and the Fatper Scholar. I can in it divide the clock, I can get me an Olympic on the Lunar, on the Davilus here at Yerk. Where I come from, I come from Trin. Um, so at the school there at Mar College, it's a really big sport. So I played it in first year and it's basically just followed me ever since. I played in Yuki School Games, which is basically Scotland, England, Ireland, and Wales at a junior level. And basically it's sport of all discipline uh, that compete in it uh, ever since kind of from then. Um, the last competition was in kind of 2012 that I competed in and it was actually in the London Olympic venues that we played in. Um, so obviously at Olympics it's the top level that you can get to. So I think knowing in a few kind of months time that elite athletes, the best of the game, will be playing there is really kind of inspiring. Now the first side Katie grows on a spar as a length time. Verengi di Balvoli Alpe agus fai chod tolli te fai nga maach gyro corum an leis a chi an aache, doch leis a dyr an aache. It's well established, um, there's always kind of been roots for junior players, um, obviously kind of grassroots roots level at school uh, level and then obviously you've got your school games uh, and then you kind of go into junior national teams as well to then prepare you for your kind of senior national teams. A Katie is a duo of us a colonics and spores of Kisha. When a heat hech to skip in a halper, go anyhook nach Roy and do, when a coke like a Danaike. Obviously, get my first uh, national team cap is obviously a big honour. Playing for your country at any time um, is an amazing opportunity. Um, and then in 2018 uh, 19 season, uh, I was actually elected as Scottish Women's Player of the Year. Um, and that's when we were actually in England competing against England. I uh, got presented that. So I think that will definitely be one of the kind of top highlights for myself. I, I never really expected it. There's obviously so many incredible players that I play with. Um, so I never kind of thought that I would be the one to get kind of nominated by players and coaches um, to get that award um, so it's definitely something that I'd love to be able to do again obviously once we're laid back inside. I'm not going to do either sports or who COVID-19 for you Katie. I could either profession to coach you as you go with my anarchy of cool done a service and slant on the share of God as I graduated in 2019 eh, as a physiotherapist and I started working in December 2019 um, so having kind of only worked three months and then getting redeployed due to the pandemic um, was obviously kind of a bit of a shock to the system so I was redeployed um, to Air Hospital um, and it, it has been really difficult but again the colleagues that I work with eh, have been so supportive through it everyone's kind of got each other's back um, and I'm still at home living with my parents and my sister so kind of having that support bubble has been really 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 beneficial. I mean, working in the NHS, it's all about teamwork and helping each other out. So we've always kind of got each other's backs. So it's a brilliant team that I work with. 
Les bars fart på sjöka chilek bäcket väg. Har kätti en ballog en upper kruy och har ett vitt dåligt kul kruy i en palvolig alper. Det ser att en av de professionella ägn, gus kätt träni och gus karm ulochi som fart på sin dihäng, är hårsta kätti är snö klicka där nälla. It's so exciting. It's really, really exciting. Um, obviously, we're used to kind of competing every single weekend. Uh, so thinking that we'll actually be able to see all your familiar faces again and play the sport that you love, uh, I can't wait. They put in so much hard work behind the scenes to get us back to this sport. So we're entirely grateful for that. And we know even though we're back playing now, the hard work doesn't stop. So they're, they're still doing everything in the background for us. <laughs> Mas the noch ge pandemic pa kiti a kopit call of the Rachel Morrison, che a i the Vikamaya o lochus on u de fata. Agas i Gishak is a doi clan ge vileta dash a clik, is yet their son a cumulatol, para statat. So we've played since we were juniors together, um, all the way up through to the women's national team. Uh, and then we decided in June 2019, obviously we weren't allowed to travel. Um, so Rachel's from, or, or lives in Ayr, uh, I'm obviously in Trun. We decided, we, you know, we can both go to the beach and kind of play some sort of volleyball together. And then as we started playing together, we realised, well, actually, we're we're pretty good together, we're really good friends. Um, so I think just from that, really. We've kept in contact throughout the pandemic, so friendship-wise, nothing's kind of changed, but obviously kind of getting back to training has been really, really good. Playing against another uh, few players today, um, so it's obviously good to get that competitive side back in. Um, obviously, we've not had it in ages. We've been playing against nobody <laughs> or just kind of competing between ourselves, so it'll be good to get back into that competitive mindset. Hasu, like Skipper Barbaras Morrison, is Kuchin a keen la Kutramach, is yet to son a free of Amasaka reing. Find good gemmich in a Hulayish and a Birmingham and a Davilis a guy reached. Got kind of lots of dates in our diaries. Um, nothing's confirmed yet. Um, we're kind of waiting on confirmation from all of them, um, but hopefully, hopefully, kind of traveling to England at some point and hopefully internationally, um, kind of all depending obviously on what kind of happens with Covid. <laughs> Our goal is to qualify Team Scotland for the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham in 2022, so obviously next year. Um, and then also for future Commonwealth Games, we're not just in it for the one year, we're definitely kind of aiming up to definitely 2030. That's our goal. Daniel Katie Fask is the Gadriak Clicker Call of the Skipper Balvoli Nahalapa. Hain Dock is a farper's good davilis a jacarichet. The least in the small, go harsh nudha upper la nu nyaike, listen to service and slanche. It is really difficult, um, and obviously, kind of having to come through from the west coast to, to like through to the east coast every single weekend it is tiring after doing a full week of work and then doing training all weekend as well so it is tiring but you know it's kind of my normal life so I'm grateful for it so even though I'm tired it's fine. <laughs> I just love the sport I love I love competing um, I love the people that I play with uh, yeah. Ha ha I Katie a drasta and then with Navai and the horse here click ball volley. Lisa could you answer game I get. I guess we have far to need a sarge, don't do it. I think to becoming a better player, kind of all round. Um, obviously, indoor, we don't know when we're going to get back to that, so it's definitely kind of focused on the beach. Once we get back to indoor training, it will be even kind of heavier load <laughs> of what we're going to kind of be asked to do, I guess. Um, but yeah, competing for the national team every single time you play for Scotland is always an honour. Um, so yeah, just carry that throughout my career. <laughs> It's great to see the positives that so many people have taken from the pandemic and even looking at Katie going through that but actually using it to further herself and her career and actually have these goals coming up soon even with the Commonwealth Games. Yeah I think that it's amazing I think the commitment I always remember as well when we came through it's it's a choice you know she's making a positive choice for herself and the commitment that to drive through to Edinburgh and she obviously wants to be the best that she can be and it's a hard sport, I think, until you see something like that live. You're, you know, it's like tennis, you watch it on the television, you're like, oh, that looks quite easy, and then you go and try and play it, and you're like, no, it's not easy. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, is, it is one of those, you're right. And, I mean, like you talk about the commitment and driving through, we do see that kind of across the board in football, the commitment that it takes. And we were just talking earlier about working full-time and playing, but for Rangers, when you did transition to full-time, did you see a big change in your players? I think just that they can just rest. I think that the transition to full time has mainly been about being able to rest, recover, have a, the right nutrition at the right time. 
you, when you're doing shifts and you're working during the day and then you're, you almost feel like you're stuck in this unbreakable cycle of, I go to work, if you've not prepped something, you're picking something really quick to eat, you're then going to train, you're sometimes not getting in until 10 o'clock at night, you're trying to eat your dinner and then your alarm's set for 6 o'clock in the morning so you're back up to either do some training before you go to work and then go to work and then back at training at night. So going full time and stuff's about rest, recover and being able to get right into detail and be able to focus solely on that, um, which is really difficult to do when you're trying to juggle a job, family, friends and the amount of things that you have to give up. Rest is probably underestimated too, isn't it? <laughs> it absolutely is. And I think that now it's going to be really difficult for a lot of people to go back because we've came through a pandemic where you've been in the house a lot of times, you've eaten your dinner at a normal time, even for, you know, regardless of what job you do, and you hear people saying about transitioning back into the office and things. It's going to be really, really tough, even for coaches as well, and like people that have volunteered their time, how they're going to adjust to full time out every night, out at the weekend. It's going to be really interesting. Really hard, so we need to take it from you, rest. <laughs> rest. <laughs> I'd appreciate it. But I mean, just looking ahead to the weekend, kind of going back to football, a big weekend coming up, Rangers versus Glasgow City. Can we just have your general thoughts on that? I think I'm just actually really excited because it's really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think that, it, you know, it's going to be a great spectacle for women's football as a whole and I, I, I hope that it kind of lives up to the expectations that people are putting on it in terms of the performance on the pitch and you know I'm sure that Glasgow City are the same but it's it's up to the players it's up to how how they prepare and how how they go into it and and but it should be a really good weekend. I don't know if it's coincidence but when we had your feature on 360 it was actually the week leading up to the first Glasgow City Rangers game of the season and now you're on the sofa going into the second <laughs> Glasgow City Rangers game of the season now the first time you'd said that this game won't defi define this season, how it goes, and the title. Do you think this game has a bigger part to play in that now? I think the closer it gets to the end, I'm uh, just really thankful that all the work that's been done in Scottish women's football, we're now committed to playing the additional seven games. And again, it's so hard because before you're kind of, you know it's predictable and you know how it's going to unfold, but like hearts, the hearts beating hips, that wasn't expected. Uh, for far with Celtic as well, like that wasn't expected. So I don't think anyone within SWPL can take anything for granted because all it takes is for somebody to have a good day or a bad day or we could have touch wood that doesn't happen. But COVID's obviously still lurking about. People are working, you can have injuries. There's so many things that can impact the rest of it and particularly because we're pretty much going into a Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday. Well, even talking about injuries, I mean, Kirsty Howitt, she was maybe someone who you would be worried to lose in terms of scoring goals, but actually in Rangers two games since losing her, you've had goal scorers from across the park. Yeah, which is amazing, but we're still really sad to lose Kirsty. I don't want to. Yes, Kirsty's a, a great player, but it's something that we're really proud of and it's something that we spend a lot of time. I think that it was interesting. I watched the Man City PSG game last night and just because you spend money doesn't mean it entitles you to win. And I think like PSG are probably the best example of that. And I think that, yeah, Rangers have invested in the programme, but it's been a huge amount of work in behind that to get the team and the camaraderie and, and build positive relationships, specifically because it's been so difficult. Like just when we were about to start the pandemic hit. <laughs> um, so yeah. You feel like we are kind of finally getting into the groove of it, aren't we? Like finally having at least two rounds of fixtures together instead of the one and the massive break. But in terms of the season as a whole, how are you enjoying the competitiveness of it? Yeah, I've lost some sleep, so I've not been well <laughs> rested at times. <laughs> but for all the right reasons, I think that it, 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 like it's just amazing to see. I think that if you've been part of women's football and, you know, BBC Alba and and stuff have been huge supporters of the women's game and I think even for like the collective to see where the game has been and where it's going is just so exciting for everyone and yeah we just need to enjoy every single moment of it now and I'm so much more appreciative because of the pandemic 
because we missed it a lot and we missed the people a lot, so it's really special. Good. Well, it is so good to have it back and it was so good to have you on the show this week and I'm sure we will be seeing you soon. And a hiachke be art coach of Spartans, Deb McCulloch, call rooms and studio. Jan Kinchok, a Welsh of a length and three shifts get their YouTube. I guess gave you a program of Gary Gakin or I played a BBC. I guess Kenny Kutchok, who be game can be on SWPL or Fiaga BBC and in Jerry Hiachkin, and Mask and Game Moore at the Rangers, I guess Glasgow City, Jadonik or BBC Alba. Ach, Kunanahuris, Marshall Live and Drast. <laughs>